what advice would you have for uh, iOS developers who want to start creating content, but they just haven't done it yet? Whether it's video or articles? Yeah, yeah just start. Just start. Um, uh, basically... Um... Welcome to another episode of the iOS Dev Podcast. Today I have Am Amir with me. He's an Hello, iOS Jason. developer and con <laughs> content creator from Egypt. And he actually has one of his courses is on uh, the Free Code Camp YouTube channel. So w welcome. Thank you for uh, for having me on your channel uh, as well. I'm re I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm so happy to be with you here. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just get started. <laughs> and before we start, I want to say that I actually watched his course before, like when I was on my journey to become an iOS developer. <laughs> so it was kind of yeah. crazy. Thanks. It's all come together. Yeah. I actually wanted to start off with, uh, did you see WWDC? Yes. I was yeah, I was actually mind blown. Like I've been waiting, uh, like, uh, I couldn't wait actually to, to see the WWDC. I was blown away with the, with the vision pro. Sure. We're going to be talking about it and, yeah. um, yeah, all, all the new stuff, uh, for, um, for the iOS 17, uh, and actually, uh, the, the new, uh, operating system for the Apple Watch as well. So yeah, there's definitely so much to talk, mm -hmm. uh, to, to talk about. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for it. Like um, I'm seeing a great future for uh, for for that product as well. Um, yeah, I, I'd like yeah. to hear your uh, your opinions about all of this uh, as well. About Vision Pro, I, I feel like Vision Pro it's it's crazy, but at the same time we have to like wait because. We still don't have access to the SDK, and you can't even um, purchase one yet. I think but I think I, I think I read it somewhere. It's, yeah, I think I read somewhere it's going to be available by the end of this year. Um, so yeah, it's definitely going to be um, something um, like it's, it's it's going to be like a game changing. Um, like um, we, we we can see from the future, like uh, when Apple does something, um, this thing is no longer as it as it was before, like, um, like for yeah. example, yeah, like, like we can say, for example, for the iPhone, um, the iPhone was not the first, um, the first, um, like multi-touch, uh, device, but they changed the game. All right. We, we can see this happening also with the, uh, maybe the tablets, uh, with the iPad, for example, and the watches, the smart watches, the watch, uh, let's yeah. Say, yeah, let's say for that. Um, so I'm seeing like a big future here for the VR headset. It's not something new. We've been seeing uh, a lot of uh, things like the Oculus uh, and uh, I believe Huawei actually uh, does something like this. I'm not sure the, the name of it, but I'm thinking um, it's going to be more mainstream than ever before. The, the, the only the only uh, difficult thing it's right now, it's the price like uh, Three thousand yeah, five hundred dollars. Yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, it's just going to take some time until it's uh, mainstream and being uh, utilized in many different things. But it's just going to be something, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it, it like um, it, it, the thing that blew me away actually uh, was the seamless integration between the ecosystem. Uh, devices that Apple has, like when you look through the Vision Pro through your uh, uh, through your MacBook, and then you get to see the, the the whole screen is just pop up out of the air, out of the blue. You can just um, like control that with your uh, hand gestures, and um, and also you can uh, like see or or ba or basically like focus your vision at certain point and they get to detect your eye position and hover at the correct icon. This is actually like a marvelous piece of engineering uh, we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Like we, we have to give Apple credit for all that. Like it's, it's a phenomenal piece of technology. Yeah. And the, the, yeah, like the only downside is like the $3,000 or the 3,500 uh, price mark for it. And only not but that of, um, actually. Like um, there oh. are so many, like so many downsides actually. Um, like people haven't been reporting um, how this is going to affect your um, your um, neck muscles. Maybe because it's it's just gonna be something heavy that you wear um, yeah. over your head. Like um, <laughs> and no one actually got to try it for that long to to say is there like. Um, any downside for that. And also it's been presented as a device that you can use to watch movies, sports, play games, uh, but like two hours battery. Um, 
uh, th this is why I heard, or basically that's what I read online. Mm -hmm. So two hours. Is the battery is... life two hours? Yeah, I, yeah, this is what I heard. I'm, I'm not sure though, but uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, and also, yeah, it's a detachable battery, so you're not just bound to sit right next to it. But the thing is, you can also hook the battery to the um, to the wall or, or anything like this. It's just not going to be as it was presented. It doesn't give you that um freedom of walking around and exploring the things around you you're just going to be sitting there so um yeah there's so many things that um that's going to be more clear when people actually get their hands on it and uh just it yeah. really more than more than this because you know at the wwdc like i understand that apple um don't want doesn't want to share a lot of information to people uh, right now, maybe it's still under development, as you, as you as, as you saw, like uh, it's just going to be uh, sell like next next year or something like this. So yeah, early um, next year. Yeah, exactly. so yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this is what uh, the, the the piece that they uh, were actually presenting at the WWDC was just like a prototype. So they didn't want the people to play um, to play around with it, like. Um, to you know they they, yeah. they they yeah they also wanted to maintain like a good picture for it um but yeah as we said at uh, at the beginning like apple knows how to change the game so yeah this is actually what i think are you uh, excited for the development side of it um actually yes like um it's it, basically like uh, since the introduction of swift ui so basically you're writing the same code and you can just reuse that code whether on your mac or your yeah. uh, ios device or even your apple watch like if you wanted to do a list or something i believe it's just going to the same code it's just going to be rendered differently on each screen um the only new thing i believe uh is just going to like shift your um, mentality from developing a 2D um, app to an app that you can interact with in the 3D yeah. world. So yeah, I'm actually pretty uh, pretty interested in that. So um, I think I'm going to be one of the first to lay their hands on the SDK once uh, oh, yeah. it's uh, roll, roll out. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any initial ideas on what to even build on something like that? Um. Okay, it's just going to be uh something, um yeah, so many ideas actually. Like um when I what I see um uh, very useful about the Vision Pro that uh, you can make use of it like as um, a replacement for your workstations or something like this. So um it's definitely going to be something um like you you can just see your notification um at at a place in the in, in the room you're you're in something like this something that can um, make your life more easier like um I, I, I like i started getting so many ideas like can i have like a sticky note that i can stick somewhere in here <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like yes you, you want you want to write something really quick but you don't yeah. want to lose it so you're just going to yeah. pin it in, in the air so yeah there's so many things that are going to be um uh that we're going to see actually like uh, i think developers are really creative uh making use of new technologies and um and also um yeah the, the thing is you can interact with things using your own hands or basically you're just seeing through it um yeah. like I, I wasn't a fan of the idea that you have like uh, something to hold in your hands like the playstation does and uh, what uh, all the accessories um, that we saw from Oculus, I believe, uh, that you just interact with things like... Uh, I, I'm not wearing something to constrain my hands as well, right? Like, uh, I, I want the sense of freedom. So what Apple did was actually uh, really great. So you, you can really interact with things around you using the just simple gestures like uh, pinching your fingers together. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think we're going to see some apps that's going to blow our minds away yeah yeah it'll be yeah. Def it'll, it'll definitely be exciting to like play around and see what we can do and uh -huh. what we can create just playing around with the with the sdk and you know that you we're not starting from scratch like uh, there are frameworks that apple use for the ar kit 
uh, for example, it's been there for for several years. So you're not going to start from scratch. There, there is some base that you have, and we are going to build on top of that. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to uh, to test it. And also, I saw I'm not sure if this is a legit photo or not, but there was like a screenshot on Twitter uh, showing you the uh, the simulator that we're going to use for developing for the Vision Pro. It was something like um, oh wow. Uh, yeah, it was something like um, navigating through a game engine. So uh, you get these toggles at the bottom right corner where you can just um, like look around and move forward, move back. So definitely it's going to be um, easy, I believe, for developing for it. Like um, it's just going to it's just going to feel like you're developing a game instead the the, the character that's going to um, basically. Uh, experience the game is not the character you're coding it's just going to be you you're going to code the surroundings or the apps that you're going to be um, interacting with and you get to interact with those things live once you put your hand on this vision pro yeah it's a, i mean i'm excited to just see what, what like for the for the sdk to drop and just go in and just yeah, see what uh that. what like even even the simulator like that'll be curious uh to see like if it looks like that or whatever it looks like it'll just be interesting to see because uh -huh. you'll be like in it'll be a simulating like a 3d space where you can add and and manipulate yeah. objects and all that stuff so. yeah i believe it's also going to be using like um swift ui things uh it's going to I, I'm, I'm not sure about that basically uh, but yeah, I believe it's going to be using Swift UI. It doesn't make any sense for Apple to like push a new framework for handling the UI or the things that you're going to be handling uh, through the VR. Um, because I, 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 I'm pretty confident about that though, because the apps that you coded in Swift UI and you run it on your Mac, I saw those apps uh, being, you, you know, once you look through, uh, to your Mac through the Vision Pro, these exact same apps are going to be um, in the space in front of you. So yeah, I believe this Vision Pro understands Swift UI as well. So um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> I can't wait actually until the uh, roll of the SDK out. Yeah. All right, now shifting gears to um, to content creation. How did you get started creating content for iOS and Swift? Yeah, it was only by coincidence. Like um, I started learning Swift, I believe um, 2021. And um, it, it wasn't the first time for me actually to start coding. Like uh, I've been coding uh, for um, like three or four years right now. And it was just something like, uh, it, it was kind of more of a hobby. Um, like um, it's it's going to be shocking for you actually if I told you that I don't actually have like a bachelor's degree in computer science or anything like this. Um, yeah, I have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, so yeah, it's totally different world. So yeah, I shifted gears <laughs> like two years ago. So, um, I started learning, um, Swift and uh, I was so excited about the, um, building apps and turn my ideas actually through the code to something that I can feel and touch through my, uh, through my, uh, uh iPhone. So, um, I started uh to think about if i'm not able to explain the things i'm learning then i don't understand it right if you don't yeah. know how to play with the code if you don't how to play with the ui if you don't know how to play with the logic to your writing then maybe uh it's better for you to look at the thing that you're learning one one more, one more time so um yeah so i started filming myself like i never had this idea of posting these videos online or anything like this so i just wanted to um to prove that uh, i can explain the things i'm doing um so yeah i started filming the first episode the second episode the third episode and then i came up with this idea about what could go wrong all right so People are going to yell at me, say, "No, no, this is not how you do this stuff." Uh, okay, we can we can chat, we can uh, we, we can reply to ourselves in the comments. Uh, we can make we can even make like um, a Discord server and um, and chat and basically share our knowledge together. So uh, once I was um, around finishing this app, like I don't want to publish um, like a very complex app. We, we were just doing, uh, I was just doing, you know, some 
some some turning ideas to uh, to an actual app like um, how as uh, how as a developer uh, you're talking to two different APIs two different services and uh, you get those data and you know shape them at, at, at the thing that you want um, for example like um, when I saw so many people are posting clones for an app that gets you the um, the details for the movies and the titles and all that kind of stuff but no one actually um, has able to you know show you the trailer for it um, for example uh, so okay we, we, we can talk to an API, let's say for example, IMDB or uh, the movies database, we can fetch all of these data and then we can extract the data that we want. So this is how you know actually the how you're dealing, how you're moving the data around and we can use that data to fetch the trailer from Google's APIs or basically the YouTube APIs. So um, yeah, um, this is how I got the idea. And now uh, once I posted, um, the first video, the second video, um, actually, the the first the, the first few viewers that actually sh um, have seen my videos were were from a group that we have here in Egypt. Um, so yeah, we have like um, a Facebook group that we have. It's called iOS Developers in Egypt. So we share ideas, we share um, like job opportunities and all that kind of stuff. So they were um, they were positive about the content I'm making. So yeah, yeah, this what it, yeah. So this is what it gives me the motivation to continue what I'm doing. And uh, once I finished this course, like I reached out to um, to uh, Freeco Camp, and they uh, they welcomed actually uh, publishing this course. So um, I was very happy. I was very excited. Like uh, this is not something small. This is this is huge. Just, uh, posting your course um, in front of millions uh, over the YouTube and get these yeah. positive getting these positive comments so yeah th that definitely gave me a push to continue what i'm doing um and yeah what i'm doing basically was just learning and learning and consume knowledge and tr turn knowledge ac actually to some ideas yeah. so yeah that was that was it and i'm yeah I, like i'm pretty glad that you liked it um if if, if not for this course you wouldn't be uh, having me on this channel yeah. as a guest so, <laughs> yeah it's like a butterfly effect you know it started with yeah. one positive comment and now we're here <laughs> yeah wow so you just um you reached out to free code camp like oh i have this course and then yeah yeah i actually did that yeah, I, I actually I actually did that. Like uh, I reached them uh, through the email, um, and uh, I offered them. Uh, well, we can share this course um, for the community for people who are um, who are interested actually in the iOS, and uh, yeah, they were happy posting it. Uh, so yeah, I was pretty happy too. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. What are your future plans for uh, content creation? Do you have any, um, or what are you thinking? Yes. Um, well, for content creation, um, I'm trying to um, to step into the world of building in public. Um, like, um, if there is any, uh, it's not going to be. A, uh, I'm not. I, I don't think uh, I want to um, continue like doing courses and all that kind of stuff, because um, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, there are more a lot of ex uh, a lot of experienced developers out there. Like uh, they can. Uh, they can do these kind of videos and um, uh, convey their knowledge to us. Um, like there are so many developers out there that could be uh, that can be doing this um, more uh, better than than I am actually. Um, I'm not saying I'm bad or anything like this, but uh, yeah, um, it's, it's people like 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 to see some things are being built on the screen. So I'm, I'm trying to look at the idea of building in public. Like if I have um and uh, an idea for a, for, for an app maybe i can uh do some vlogs uh on it like share uh the the things um um i'm facing right now like uh, some of the bugs that i that i've been encountering th through my workflow um yeah maybe i can learn something new um on on youtube as well and share my experience with that like maybe i want to step in the back end world maybe i i want to learn some some something more about Node.js and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I'm thinking in the future, there are going to be some entertaining stuff um, apart from only just focusing on building one single product and uh, just showing people um, like every single line of code. People get uh, bored 
at some time you know you know yeah. like <laughs> so yeah. yeah but i'm just trying to find the the right time for doing that because uh, as a content creator yourself you know how how long you spend editing your videos and yeah. writing your scripts and coming up with the ideas and all that kind of stuff yeah so it's it's pretty hard um, some people on YouTube or uh, don't actually appreciate that. Like, uh, where are your videos? Why, why, are you why are you taking so long uh, posting a new videos? But you, yeah. you, you definitely know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe you could even do some uh, Vision Pro stuff now that it's coming out. Um, once I decide if yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be yeah. buying it at the first place or not, like, uh, uh, do, do you want to really wait, uh, like, spend uh, three, 300, uh, like, 300, uh, $3,500 right now, like, $3,500? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's gonna take some time. Um, or maybe I'll do it. N who knows? Maybe I wake up someday I'm, yeah. uh, and decide I'm going to buy this Vision Pro thing. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you have for uh, iOS developers who want to start creating content, but they just haven't done it yet? Whether it's video or articles? Yeah, yeah just start. Just start. Um, uh, basically, um, yeah, basically, if you, let's, let's say, for example, that you spend a lot of time um, creating videos and sharing your ideas with people, and then you got one negative comment. Okay some people are just going to look at this comment okay i'm not doing anything uh, like this anymore and you're yeah and, and you won't be able to uh you know keep doing uh videos however the the way i look at negative comments is just these are some constructive comments like yeah i know some people are harsh in the comments but you can take what they what they want to actually uh, tell you like um, if there's something wrong with the way you're speaking maybe you're moving your hands too fast maybe you're talking too fast maybe you're not explaining um, one single uh, thing uh, at a time maybe you're just you know um, like sharing your um, your entire thoughts and ideas gets to like uh, being entangled with each other so yeah, so, 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 so you, you can actually learn from these negative comments. I'm not talking about uh, the positive comments here because positive comments, sure, they're going to um, keep pushing you forward. But if you're afraid of, of one, negative, uh, one single negative comment, well, learn from it. So um, if you actually want to start creating like um, a content, not just only for iOS, but for anything like that, for for anything, for instance, um, programming, um, like even if you want to just uh, take videos of your daily work or your daily life as well, just do it. If if you have this gut feeling that you want to do something, please do it because you, you yes you you may fail you may succeed, but if you haven't done it, like definitely you're 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 gonna fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. That's true. And like you said earlier, you mentioned that um, the best way to actually learn and master something is trying to teach it to others. Yes, yes, that, that's, the, that's the best way, actually. Um, and also, it could be like, um, like a timeline for your journey. Like, uh, for example, if I started uh, posting contents on iOS, uh, like, uh, let's say, for example, this is going to be my first video on YouTube. So um, June 9th, uh, I'm just a beginner after uh three or four months okay um three or four months basically um gonna be better so y you get to see like a timeline of how knowledgeable you yeah. are at this <laughs> so it's kind of fun sharing that with people as well yeah yeah that's that's very true you could you could see the progression on how good you've gotten as long as of course you're you're working on getting better yes and it's crazy like even for my channel or not even for this channel, but for other things that I've done, like if I go back and look at the first thing I did, I built or I released, mm -hmm. I look at back at it, I'm like, what is that? Like it's ugly or it's like it's yeah. not uh, as good have, as it is now. Yeah, you know? I um I myself like have so many comments on the things that I've been doing in uh, in that course uh, I pushed on Freeco Camp. Uh, like I can definitely see. Um, I shouldn't have coded this this way. I shouldn't have added this logic at this view controller for example or like i can see uh, i can see my progression uh over my own course like uh yeah so uh, right. it, yeah if so if, if someone is starting uh starting out the, the ios definitely uh, you should uh check out this course 
Um, and also whenever you're trying to take a course, for example, you, you just need to define the things that you want to learn from this course, actually. Um, like, um, I get uh, that um, some of the things regarding uh, separating of the concerns and not following a best practice regarding a, a certain architecture was not followed in this course, but maybe I'm trying to teach something else. Maybe I'm trying to teach you how to write programmatic uh, UI using UI kit. Maybe I'm trying to show you how to um, integrate both APIs at your uh, at your app. So uh, yeah, uh, whenever you're taking a course, for example, you have to define the things that you want to learn from this course. Okay, I can buy some really expensive course that's going to build like a very ugly app, but I'm trying to learn. <laughs> yeah. How, yeah, I'm trying to learn how to build a network layer, for example, out of this course. Maybe he is doing that to show how to build your app, maybe in the new architectures like uh, Viper or MVVM or, or things like this. Okay. So, yeah, you have to define the things that you want to learn or take from a course, uh, other than, you know, um, saying like this course is five out, of, uh, out, five out of five stars, you know, like, yeah, it's definitely going to have some downside. But yeah, uh, again, uh, try to identify the things that you want to learn first. Switching gears again, are you are you located in in Egypt, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm located in Egypt right now. But most of the work that I do is outside of Egypt. Like I work hundred percent remotely, uh, whether with uh, like the company I'm at right now, or I'm trying to make a career on Upwork as well as a freelancer. So uh, yeah, uh, exploring more. Um, more the challenges are going to, you know, help you uh, learn much faster than this. Yeah. Is is that the norm or the standard in Egypt? Like if you want to be an iOS developer, most of the times you you work remote for a company located in another country? Um, well, it's not the norm in Egypt right, right now. Um, like, um, I don't even think that it's very common seeing an iOS developer here in Egypt. Like, um, it's going to be like two out of 10, maybe, uh, it's not that common that like, um, we're, we're here in Egypt are trying to pursue in, into the digital world. Um, but pursuing like uh, a career outside Egypt or basically working remotely, um, basically, um, is a thing that you can take leverage of, um, you, you know, at, at the, uh, the past, um, the 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 past year or, or something the um the exchange rate between the US dollar and the uh and the Egyptian pound were not so great like um they're so um we're so impacted by the inflation here so um if you have the um the skill or basically if you have the opportunity to take uh advantage of that and shift your entire work remotely and start earning um, in a foreign currency, that's going to be, uh, definitely, um, like, um, something that I would recommend for you, for everybody. Like, um, so this is why I tell you, uh, um, this is not the norm here in Egypt because most of the work here in Egypt is being developed in Egypt, built in Egypt, sold in Egypt. Uh, but the thing, if you have the opportunity to share, um, your skill or basically share your time with other uh, countries to earn from there. So yeah, definitely go, go, go with that. Like, uh, yeah. So iOS development in general, isn't that huge, right? Um, it started, it, it started, it, yeah, it started to kick in. Um, not gonna lie. Like, uh, I, I wouldn't say, um, that, uh, it's very rare for finding an iOS developer in Egypt. Like, um, we are, um, it's, it, it's there, there are quite developers here in Egypt, actually, like, yeah, um, I'm not sure you're going to find, um, a lot of them actually, um, like specializing at the iOS development, are, um, in, in particular, maybe, um, maybe, yeah, maybe here in Egypt, the Android developers are, uh, like, uh, are, are available with right, more, right? much. Yeah, they are very, yeah, they're, they're more, they're more, there are more, uh, Android developers here in Egypt, uh, other than the native iOS, um, leaving aside those, um, cross platforms like Flutter or React Native as well. Um, I think oh, yeah. the, um, yeah, the majority of the, um, of the developers here in Egypt, um, uh, are backend developers, Android developers, um, not quite many iOS developers. If we uh, if we compare those numbers to the actual people working in the tech industry here in Egypt, however, 
uh, yeah, there are a lot of people here in Egypt working in the uh, in the tech industry. But I'm just talking about the iOS um, iOS section. Yeah, I think it's uh, well, par partially due to like in the global market, Android is a lot more prominent, right? Like a lot more people have Androids than Apple phones. Yes, yes, uh, a lot of a lot of people. Yes, um, definitely a lot of people have more Android phones um, than uh, than iPhones. Yes, uh, that's definitely true. Um, yeah, however, I think this is also um, it's it's not negatively impacting the um, the uh, the iOS or or thing or anything like this. Like uh, if I told you, for example, like name one company that has um, a dedicated app for the Android users and does not have a dedicated app for the iOS. Simply there are there aren't right. So yeah, um, yeah so also so, so with the increase of people having more Android phones, well, companies are going to think, okay, we need to ship an app for these people to help them out uh, doing services over the phone, like banking apps and all that kind of stuff. And when you ship an Android app, you're going to ship an iOS app along with it, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, 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 yeah, um, I definitely uh, I, I, like recommend iOS development as a career for, for people who are still making their mind whether to join Android or iOS. Yeah. Um, I have nothing to say against the Android as well. Like I really like <laughs> this platform, uh, yeah. but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just talking about my own experience. Like if you wanna pursue a career as an iOS developer, then yes, go for it. Um, the future is bright. Um, we, we have so many, things that we can do. We have so many um, things that we can learn. And also with the introduction of the Vision Pro, I think we're going to see a new kind of apps that no one has ever uh, imagined ha having before. Yeah. True. And uh, what advice would you have for, let's say somebody in Egypt who wants to be an iOS developer? Um, like he's already an iOS developer or one? No, 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 like he's to... learning, he's learning. Like, uh, he, he wants to be somebody, he or she wants to become an iOS developer, but they're, they're not there yet. They're like in the learning process. Yeah. And they um, live in okay. Egypt. So what advice would you have for them? And they live in Egypt. Okay. So let's start talking first about the people who are living in Egypt and then we can, you know, generalize this, um, this idea. Okay. So, um, for right. Egypt, first of all, you have to study the market. You have to study the market needs. Um, like, um, here in Egypt, uh, most of, uh, of the companies, and I think this is also worldwide, like, um, most of th these companies are still using UIKit. So please, please, please learn how to use UIKit, learn how to, um, to handle uh, or maintain an app, whether it's coded, uh, entirely programmatically or, or using NIP files, storyboards, all that kind of stuff. So you have to identify the market needs. You have to learn the things that are being used in the market. So, um, if the market is using, uh, let's say for example, Amplifier for handling, uh, URL requests or all that, all that kind of stuff. Well, you should learn that if you like. Uh, if you think that there are more better libraries or, or anything like this, please just stick with the with the business needs or the market needs first. And then you can just start by learning um, some more stuff that you might find uh, going to be useful in the future, like combined, for example. I think people or, or companies here uh, that are using the reactive way of programming are relying heavily maybe on things like Rx Swift. Um, there, there, there is, uh, like, um, an initiative here maybe to, um, to update that code to be using combine, but it's just going to be a, a lot of technical depth in, you know, uh, no one's actually going to revamp his old app and the infrastructure of his app to change, uh, one thing to another. So yeah, definitely my, um, my hundred percent advice or basically my number one advice is just try to learn how the, how to fit inside the market. Um, like for Egypt, let's say, uh, you, you can just open up the, um, you, you can use, uh, things like LinkedIn or any other websites that's offering, uh, jobs here in Egypt and start by reading the requirements of the, um, of the, uh, of the job itself. So this is just going to help you uh, navigate through and, um, and, and, and being able to enter this, uh, this field. Yeah, I know it's going to be, uh, difficult at first, um, as a fresh graduate, for example. Um, but yeah, just 
keep pushing and keep applying for jobs um learn what your uh, the things that you um you don't know more about uh, like you're not professional at something that's completely normal you're not going to be a professional i was developer as a fresh graduate you're, you still have so many things to learn and companies understand that like uh, when you join a company they're not going to um, give you like a task of updating a network layer for example it's not going to happen for a, a fresh or a junior developer um, they're going to start by giving you well we, we just need to change that ui a little bit uh, we'll uh, try to see um, why this bug happens and try please to uh, to solve it. So yeah, don't overwhelm yourself. Just focus on the uh, the business needs um, in the market that you are in. And I believe this is the, uh, th th this is it. Like uh, this is the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That yeah, that'll be super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, Apart and you from say learning, UI kit, right? <laughs> yeah, UI yeah. Kit, UI, sure. UI, UI, UI kit is basically um, being used like a lot here. Um, like um, I've worked professionally here in Egypt on one app made entirely with Swift UI, and all the other apps were just uh, written like 100% UI kit. So um, this is my. Um, my advice for uh, for junior developers right now and um, i'm not saying you shouldn't learn swift ui swift ui is definitely the future but if you want to keep up with the market that you are in right now we you just need to um to learn first how to code in ui kit and basically understand like uh, five years ago i believe um companies demanded some people uh, with knowledge of objective c right and this objective c um code is right now called like uh like legacy code so i believe in three or four years ui kit is just going to be considered as legacy code that you should know how to navigate through okay yeah so yeah and how did you yeah. get your your first role Okay, so um, as I told you, um, I, I, like I don't have a degree in computer science, so yeah, it took me some time to um, um, to, to join the market uh, as an iOS developer. So uh, first thing, I made my mind. Okay, um, the market here is not promising for me as a mechanical engineer. Um, okay, what do I like else? Do I want to spend my entire life doing yeah things I, I like, but uh, it's not that promising here in egypt no so um i also like to code I, I i i like to you know um spend hours um <laughs> over my laptop here to solve a really small bug and i'm really happy that i did it so yeah i made up my mind and i decided that i want to pursue a career as an ios developer okay so where do i go and here i'm talking to people who who are like me basically who, who don't have a like uh, a degree in uh, in computer science so basically here in egypt um the um, the ministry of communication here offers uh things like boot camps um that teaches you um like computer science related stuff and lets you focus on a special track uh for example some people um go to these boot camps and um like they trade they they take like an iOS track, Android track, a back end, front end, yada yada yada. Um, so I chose the um, the iOS track, sure, <laughs> and uh, and then it took me like uh, three to four months until I got graduated, and then after that, uh, like I was graduated back in, um, I believe th that was um 2022 i believe april 2022 yeah so yeah i used linkedin i sent my resumes uh like uh, in a lot of places um i also like um talked to more experienced people how to set up my resume and what to write and what not to write maybe things that recruiters do not like uh having or reading on a resume and then um, here, uh, there was a local company here in Egypt that I actually got um, an interview with. Um, 
I'm so glad that I passed the interview from the first time. And then I received the offer that was like in, in a duration of two days or something like I did the HR interview, I did the technical interview, and then, then I received the offer. So, um, uh, April 7th. Uh, 2022. That was my first day as a professional iOS developer here in Egypt. And the rest is history. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, I had a similar similar story because I I, I was a math major. Okay. And I, I'd taken some computer science classes, but I never fully studied mm. any any particular like uh, front end or back end or iOS or, you know, Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, around like 20, like around COVID time, like during those years, I started yeah, playing around yeah. with some more I, programming languages and then I found yeah, uh, I, iOS. I, I think so many of us like discovered some things that they had no idea that they can do or learn during the COVID uh, time. Like, uh, <laughs> a, yeah, a, a lot of time to spare uh, in your home and you're just bored. Okay, I'm going to, you know, learn how to code. Like, uh, if, if, <laughs> if, you, if you came to me like 10 years ago and you told me that 10 years later, you're going to be working as an iOS developer, I'm going to say like, no, it's not gonna happen. Uh, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, this is not gonna happen. Like 10 years ago, I didn't even, a note that I can spend all that time over uh, over a tiny tiny bug just trying to you know move a button or basically uh, clear something out of the screen. So yeah, no no one knows what it comes in the next years. <laughs> yeah, and when you were doing mechanical engineering, what uh, what career or path were you looking to take with that? Um, I believe something. Uh, to do with uh, power generation, like uh, back when I was in the college, I was looking at these kind of internships. Um, maybe I could work as a uh, as a power engineer in a power plant or something. Maybe uh, if I was lucky here uh, to work in an oil refining company or anything like this. So yeah, it's the very normal. Um, I didn't have this idea that I could be shifting towards the tech industry. So I was just thinking about these um, normal jobs that that, that you that, that we hear since we were kids, like somewhere uh, someone is working as an engineer uh, in an oil refinement company or, th or something like this. So yeah, it's something huge here to uh, to work inside the uh, in the Middle East, uh, to be specific, like uh, companies like 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 countries like Kuwait or something or, or anything like this. So if you had this opportunity, maybe uh, I wouldn't have become an iOS developer, but I think um, since I was in college, like I had something for tech. Like um, uh, I, I remember taking courses uh, on programming languages that I knew 100% that I'm not going to to use. Um, like I took C courses, I took C++ courses, and uh, I believe I, I I learned some stuff about Django uh, with with Python as well. Um, and w w when I learned a little bit of uh, about Django, then I wanted to show the apps that I've been using or basically developing. So I decided to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as well. Um, so yeah, I think I did a lot of coding. Uh, I tried uh, lots of technology until I was 100% uh, sure that I wanted to continue as an iOS developer. And what's a what's a typical work day for you then? All right, so um, since I'm working 100% remotely, so I usually start my uh, work at um, 10 a.m. So basically, I wake up at nine. I just have like my breakfast and uh, take a wash or something, and then start working uh, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. After that, I get my lunch, um, and then I just rest for a little bit a, 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 a little bit and then i just go out and meet my friends if i wanted to go to the gym uh that's going to be um after the work as well um here in egypt we have we, we don't have actually the um the habits of sleeping early so i'm not an early bird by any means like i'm a night owl <laughs> so yeah I, people please don't take advices from me <laughs> these are my advice for me, but, no. 
<laughs> yeah uh, okay sleep early wake up early that's the norm okay but at least not for me so yeah after i finish my work yeah i usually go out uh, hanging out with my friends or anything like this um but at, um like um it's been like uh, a month or two since i told you like i um i also um have like this freelancing uh contract on upwork or uh yeah uh for for freelancing jobs um uh, my schedule is so uh so busy actually like um for the past week for example uh i've been working from 10 a.m to 2 a.m uh the next day so 16 hours of coding so it's yeah. really difficult uh for me uh at least uh these uh these a little while and um yeah so and, and nothing no, nothing's uh fancy uh i've been doing in the last couple of months or something like this but the usual day um let me talk to you more about my work day like we um can start uh my day with a quick two hours of coding session then we get into meetings de deciding uh if there's something wrong with the app uh, deciding uh, and talk a little bit more about the bugs that we have and um and also the the technical debt that we have that uh, that needs to be uh, refactored for example and um we have another session of code we have maybe maybe we can have like peer programming sessions uh that could be uh, useful for some new uh, developers as well and uh, yeah that's uh, that, that's basically it how's how's uh, freelancing on upwork um okay so freelancing on upwork um for me at least um i get that you you have to dedicate uh like a lot of time uh out of your day just for for the for for that kind of job um it's another mentality in because you're not working at a firm um with engineering managers and senior developers or or anything like this and product managers as well you're talking directly to the product owner or the one who has an idea that wants that that wants it to you know come to life so um you're not yeah. going to be only uh, a developer you're going to be um a product manager maybe you have uh to um to convey all the knowledge that you have in a simple way for that uh, client for example because uh maybe that client uh wants to do something that apple just uh won't won't, won't allow for, for for instance um this this client want to create an app that takes calls for you okay we, we all know this is not available on the ios you you make your calls through apple phone app okay so uh yeah, yeah you have to um basically uh in a simple manner and in a simple way to uh to make them understand um uh, what they want what they need uh if what they need can be actually feasible on uh, on the ios device um so yeah it's uh, it's not easy <laughs> it's uh, it's not an easy task uh, handling a, a client so uh, yeah i I also get that finding the first job is just as hard as uh, finding the first job in a real world. So yeah, it it, it just comes like uh, you have to um, make a good proposal for the client. Um, maybe you can um, show show that client that you have experience uh, with the with the things that they need. Um, also, um, maybe maybe you can uh, divide their requirements uh to like milestones that you can achieve over time so yeah this is how you you pursue or basically how to uh to send a proposal for for a client you you, you get to know that a client is just going to look at all of the proposals or uh, at like five second duration so you have to put <laughs> the things that he is looking for okay like uh I, I, I like let, let, let's say for example i'm a client and i wanted someone to work uh for me on a social media app so the th the last thing that i want to see is one bragging about himself i just need to see the skills i'm looking for at those five seconds if you got my attention then i will i will talk to you and if i talk to you that's the first step of getting the job but 
by, by no means it's an easy uh, it's not an easy uh, job to do it's not an easy uh, thing to uh, to take like uh, two parallel um, jobs together but yeah the uh, you have to do what you have to do <laughs> yeah and i'm assuming you get like some interesting projects like you get to learn a, like a lot because you're doing a lot of like different and random things right like when you're working with different um, clients yeah uh, working with different clients actually gives you this opportunity to learn um more stuff um because if you're working for a software house for example then uh, maybe you're going to be exposed to like two project at maximum um if they have more clients maybe you can be working on uh more than two uh it depends on uh, also on how large the team is um if you're working on a product based company uh let's say for example spotify then you are working for this kind of apps you know um so yeah taking um taking lots of clients of on upwork things like this shifting um a com uh, from a company to another company yes you get to be exposed to another um the, uh, another type of app maybe this app is all about media maybe it's a fintech app um maybe it's uh, an e-commerce app so yeah it's definitely uh a thing to um to make use of like uh if, if you're working with uh, with upwork based clients um yeah you're you're going to learn so many things yes yeah. and the most important thing for me actually is how and knowing how to talk to a client how to present yourself how to present your skills as an asset that the client is uh looking for yes yeah, that's a really valuable skill to learn to be honest, that's super valuable. Yeah, yeah. Soft skills is right. really important. Yeah, yeah. Most people here in the tech industry are like focus on the um, um, like they 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 focus on the technical Building. stuff. <laughs> yeah. You grew up in Egypt, right? Yeah, I grew up in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. I've never actually been outside of Egypt. Oh really? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have uh? Do you have plans to go anywhere, or are you good? You just want to stay in Egypt. <laughs> No, no, I have, uh, I have plans to travel the world if I, if I, if I can. Um, it's, it, it's definitely going to be uh, somewhere uh, at the future. Yeah. All right, so the the question basically was, um, oh, how do current Egyptians feel about like ancient e uh, Egypt? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to be talking about this Netflix documentary or something. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Uh, actually, we're uh, like we feel connected uh, to the ancient Egyptians. Like um, we're proud of our history. Um, th th there's so much to learn about our history. Actually, there's so much for us as Egyptians to know about uh, about the Egyptian history. Like it's so uh, huge. It's uh, it has so many details. Um, uh, so many wonderful things to to learn and read about. So um, yeah, when when people outside of Egypt start talking about the Egyptian and, and the ancient Egypt and the ancient Egypt, um, so I'm very excited. Like uh, people are interested in my own culture, our uh, own history. Um, yeah, so it's definitely evolving. Like uh, we don't live as they used to live, like seven thousand years ago, or, or anything like this. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> like, yeah, like. Uh, like uh, all of us evolve into something more yeah. advanced so yeah so um uh, we're, we're pretty connected and we are pretty proud of our own culture our own wow. history and all that kind of stuff yeah. and do you venture to like the uh the pyramids often or the yeah the pyramids uh yeah i've never actually been inside the pyramids uh, like the Great Pyramid of Giza, like uh, I've never actually been inside of it. Like um, I went there for uh, for sure. Like uh, I I did the normal stuff. Like I took some pictures. I've never did this Sphinx photo when you <laughs> make this uh, with your hands. <laughs> I've never taken this photo. <laughs> okay, but yeah, um, yeah. There's so many things here in Egypt, like uh, that, like 
we want people around the world to know that they exist in Egypt. It's not only about the uh, the pyramids. Like there are so many different uh, monuments and all the different uh, like uh, buildings that that we want people here to come and see. It's not only about the uh, the fair uh, like the ancient Egyptians. Like uh, as I told you, like. Um, uh, the history uh, history of Egypt is not uh, like it's it's not a single uh, line of events like uh, it, it has so many complications um, maybe you, you get here to see like uh, some stuff based off of the Romans and the Islamic uh, things here in Egypt as well also the Christian uh, here as well so yeah there's so many things to, to come here and, and see in Egypt yeah what would you recommend for if somebody's traveling to Egypt? What would you recommend to go then? Well, um, I'm I'm not recommending something particularly because um, like the food first 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 thing you, you have to try the Egyptian food. Uh, it's uh, it's like uh, it's it's it's, re it's really good, and um, and also um, there are some coastal cities that uh, I would very. Uh, very much rec recommend you go to like a north coast um also dab uh charm sheikh or things like this and um yeah for for seeing this um stuff from ancient egypt yeah i, I really uh recommend going to luxor or aswan things like uh cities like this is pre it's, it's pretty beautiful like uh seeing the nile um uh, here, people in Egypt, they we say the, the the Nile in Aswan, for example, it's totally different in the in in the Nile in Giza or or Cairo. Uh, even though it's the same river, but you have to see the Nile in Aswan. It's it's really beautiful. Yeah, because I want to visit one day. I haven't been, but I really want to go. And yeah, check you out, gotta like, talk to the... me first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll I'll let you know. Yeah, you, you you definitely have to let me know. Yeah, I'm going to be the tour guide here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being on the show. And uh, is there anything you wanted to say or shout out? You know, you could. Thank you, Jason, for having me uh, as a guest on your show. Um, you have like 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 I said, you have a wonderful channel. And um, the the last thing that I want to share with people here, uh, like please, 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 if you have any ideas about creating like uh, like doing like content creation uh please do share with us your journey share with us the things that you've learned and um yes and and, and always know that y you don't have to like uh, being backed out by, by the negative comments or, or things like this please 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 share with us your knowledge and uh, as you can see we are a lovely community uh we we welcome you <laughs> like we're gonna be like we're going to be receiving you with welcoming arms so yeah and um yeah i'm, I'm i that's the last thing i want to share with people yeah that's that, that's right. the more that's that's definitely the, the most important part yeah cheering uh yeah. like you, you can you can definitely check my youtube videos and i promise you in the in the near future there are going to be a lot of more things going on on my youtube channel a lot of things other than just courses and things like this some maybe we can talk maybe we have uh, other podcasts like this uh sometime well, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone who tuned in. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and see you guys next time. I'm riding between it all in this curve to play. I'm a piece of the puzzle, I'm a fit where you need me, baby.